Hi everyone, welcome to a lesson on applying proportional change to real life situations. Okay, a little bit of note taking, but then straight into questions, and I'll show you two methods today, okay? So, what are we doing? We're going to be applying a direct and inverse proportion to real life problems, but we're not going to be using the proportion symbol, the one that looks like a fish, okay? We don't need to use that, it's not that type of proportion. But it's um, still thinking about uh, whether things are directly proportional to each other, so increasing one increases another, or inversely proportional, where increasing something decreases something else. Okay, so for instance, if I increase the number of workers working on a job, it should take less time. Okay, or if I've got more sand to move that will take more time or need more machinery okay so it's looking at how variables are linked to each other directly or inversely the two methods i'm going to show you are a really good non-calculator method when you've got nice numbers that's called the unitary method and that's where you have to find what one thing can do in one hour or what one thing can do in one day Okay, it's all about working out what one of something can do in one unit of time. Okay, and then I'll show you a calculator method which uses fractions, which is very handy if you've got a calculator, okay, especially if the numbers aren't very nice, where you could still use a unitary method, but because of rounding issues, maybe you wouldn't want to. So it's a much quicker way of doing it if you've got a calculator on you. Okay, so pause the video at any time to write the questions down. Okay, maybe you'll want to watch me do the first one and then have a go at yourself at the next two. I'll show three of each type. Okay, so the first question we've got, and I've got some nice clip arts on these as well, look. And like I say, we're gonna use what's called the unitary method on this one. It takes four men eight days to move 800 tons of soil. How long would it take for three men to move 300 tons of soil? Okay, so in the unitary method, what you've got to do is start by writing down what you know. So there's three variables here. There's the number of men, the number of days, and the amount of soil. So what we've got originally is that four men take eight days to move 800 tons. Okay, And the unitary method means we've got to try and get down to what one man can do in one day. Okay, now I'm only going to change one variable at a time. So first of all, I'm going to divide by four. I'm going to say what could one man do. And I'm not going to change the days. So keep the days as eight days. And if there's only one instead of four, I can divide this by four. Okay, so one man in eight days could move 200 tons on his own. Okay, now I'll change the days down to one day. So now one man... So if you could do 200 tons in eight days, if I divide by eight, I should be able to work out what he can do in one day, which is 25 tons, 200 divided by eight, okay? And that line there is crucial because from here now, I can work out any number of men and any number of days, as long as I do the same thing to the tons calculation at the end, okay? So we've broken it down to one man, one day. And now we build it back up to answer the question. So we've got to do three men and work out how many days it's going to take to do 300 tons of soil. So first of all, let's now make this three men instead of one man. Okay, still one day. I only ever change one thing at a time. So three men in one day, if I times that by three, can move 75 tons. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? If one man can do 25 on his own, then three of them should be able to do 75 per day. And we're aiming to get to 300 tons. Okay, so you're gonna have to work out how many 75s there are in 300. The numbers are quite nice. There are four 75s in 300. So this is times four. So I could either have four times as many men in one day but because the question says I've only got three men, I'm going to leave the three men fixed there and I'll times the number of days by four. And so I can work out that it'll take three men four days to do 300 tons of soil. 
okay? And that's only possible because in the middle there I knew that one man in one day could move 25 tons. Unitary meaning one, okay? So that's why it's called the unitary method, when you break it right down to one thing. Right, let's have a look at another example then. This one is about cranes moving containers. So pause the video and have a go yourself. Another nice picture there, look. He's not paying much attention and he doesn't have a hard hat on. Right, two cranes this time. So two cranes can move 80 containers in five hours. So I'll put five hours here and they can move 80 containers. And again, I'm going to try and break this down to one crane in one hour because this is the unitary method. So I think what I'll change first of all is the five hours down to one hour. So leave the cranes alone. So leave that as two for now. We'll divide by five because we're doing one hour, not five hours. So dividing by five gives us 16 containers. So that's two cranes in one hour. The unitary method says I get need to get one crane in one hour. So now I'll, if I half the number of cranes, still one hour, then I can half the number of containers being shifted. So that's going to be eight containers. So one crane in one hour can move eight containers. So there we go. That's our crucial line. And now I can build it back up to answer the question. So how many cranes would I need to move 120 containers in three hours. Okay, so let's change one hour to three hours and see what happens. So still one crane. If it can move eight containers in one hour, times it by three, it can move 24 containers in three hours. It's really important here that you only ever change sort of one thing at a time. Don't change the number of cranes and the number of hours, you'll get yourself an eye pickle. Okay, so keep one fixed and change the other, and then in the next line you can change the other one as well. Right, now I need to get, so look, this is our target, we've got to move 120 containers. So the three hours, I can't do anything about that. Okay, the question says I've got to have three hours. I need to get to 120 containers. The numbers are nice if you know how many 24s are in 120, which is five. So if I've got five times as many containers, I'm going to need five times as many cranes. So I'm going to need five cranes if I want to shift 120 containers in three hours. Okay. And then one more on the unitary method then. Again, if you want to have a go at this one before I do, what I would say is it's probably a good idea to change kilometers to meters here. Otherwise, you're going to have some nasty decimals. Okay, we've got six workers in 10 days can lay 3,000 meters. I'd rather have big numbers than decimals. Okay, they're not hard numbers, but I don't want to go into 0 0.0 noughts. Okay, let's get it down to one worker in one day. So let's divide by six first of all. So let's go for one worker. So I'm changing the workers. I'm leaving the days the same. I need to divide by six. That's 500 meters. Okay, so one worker on his own in 10 days can do 500 meters. And now I'll change the days. So one worker in one day, we need to divide by 10, which is 50 meters. Okay, there we go. We've got down to one our unitary method there look one worker one day can do 50 meters of road and now we build it back up again so the question says we've got five workers and 15 days okay so let's change this to five workers and leave the day alone times by five because this five workers now is 250 meters so five workers in one day can lay 250 meters of road and now I need to get to 15 days. So five workers in 15 days. So times in by 15 comes to 3,750 meters. Or if you want to put it back into kilometers now, 3.75 kilometers. 
Now, there is a big assumption being applied to all of these problems, and that is is that every worker is equally hard working, okay? That every day they do equally as much work, okay? And that having one worker doesn't affect the fact that the work is being done whereas in reality if you've got one person working on their own and a job needs two people to do it then no work is going to get done is it because he's on his own so say something was too heavy to lift on your own it doesn't matter how many days you give him he's not going to be able to lift it okay so you may ask you for an assumption when you do these types of questions and you can just say something like you've assumed that all workers or that all cranes or whatever the question is about that they do the same amount of work at all times okay and it's not affected by the weather or anything like that okay so that's the unitary method on a non-calculator paper when the numbers are nice now I'm going to show you the calculator method now in bullet points this doesn't make a lot of sense until you actually see one but it might be worth sort of jotting down the three bullet points just as a little guide for you to follow I know some of you like having a step-by-step -step guide to do uh, maths problems Okay. It'll make more sense when we look at a question, and my first one is about cows. Okay, so basically, what we're going to do here is try and make some fractions, and we've got a calculator for this. So go and grab a calculator and pause the video if you haven't got one. Okay, because the numbers here are not very nice, so you wouldn't particularly want to use unitary method. I mean, you could, but you'll have to be very, very accurate. Okay. Uh, we've got five cows can eat 340 kilograms of grass in 12 days. How much grass could three cows eat in eight days? Now the question is about how many kilograms of grass that the cows can eat. And so what you should do is start with the original value for that. And the original value is 340. Okay, so when you're using the calculated fraction method, Start with the original value for whatever you're working out. We're working out how much grass and the original amount for that was 340. Okay. Right, now we're going to times by a fraction and we're going to times by another fraction. One of the fractions is to do with the number of cows that are in the problem and the other fraction is to do with the number of days that we're working for, okay, or they're eating for. And this is where you've got to be a little bit clever to work out whether it's direct or inverse and it's the amount of grass they can eat going to go up or down because of it. So if we look at the cows first, originally we had five cows, now we've only got three. Will the amount of grass that they can eat be more or less now? If we've got less cows, they'll eat less grass. And so when we make a fraction out of the three and the five, I make a fraction that is smaller than one because times in by three fifths makes things smaller okay and then we look at the amount of gra uh, the number of days they've got to eat originally they had 12 days and now we're only giving them eight days so what effect will that have on the amount of grass they can eat will it increase or will it decrease well if they've got less days it will decrease and so with the 8 and the 12 i make another fraction that is smaller than one to decrease okay Fractions that are smaller than one decrease. Fractions that are bigger than one, okay, top heavy, improper, they are when you think it's going to increase. And all you do now on your calculator is type that in using the fraction key. And what you should get is 136 kilograms. Okay. I mean, after all, we did have less cows and we did give them less days. And so the 340 kilograms we started with reduced both times. Okay. If we look at another question like that then, and really the only thing you can get wrong on these is that you get your fractions upside down, okay. So this time we've got uh, a flood, okay. It's either a giant man and a giant bird on a normal sized house, or it's a normal sized man and a normal sized bird on a tiny house. I'm not sure which one is more troubling. Okay, in this question we are working out how many pumps would be needed to clear 180 meters cubed in two hours. Okay, and then what we've got to start with is that eight water pumps can clear 140 meters cubed of flood water in three hours. Okay, so what are we working out? How many pumps? How many pumps were there originally? Eight. So start with that. Okay, the thing you're working out. Okay, 
Originally, we cleared 140 metres cubed of flood water, and in our question, we've got to clear 180. So, is that going to increase the number of pumps we need, or is it going to decrease? If there's more water, we'll need more pumps. It's going to increase, so I need to make a top-heavy improper fraction, a fraction that's bigger than 1. So, 180 over 140. Okay. And then we're saying that we want the water cleared in two hours, and originally we took three hours. So if I want the job to be done quicker, will I need more pumps or less pumps? I'm going to need more pumps. So is it two over three, or is it three over two? If it's gonna increase the number of pumps I need, I need a bigger than one improper top heavy fraction so it's 3 over 2 because I know I'm going to need more pumps if I want to do the job in less time okay now that comes out and this is an example of the horrible numbers it comes out as 15.42 okay now obviously you can't have 15.42 pumps uh, 15 is not going to get the job done in two hours and so what you'd have to say there is that you actually need 16 pumps Okay, which would actually get the job done in a little bit less than two hours, but we're dealing with discrete things here. You can't have a, a fraction of a pump. Okay. And the last example then, because I've been catching up on my gold rush, is about bulldozers. They use a lot of bulldozers in gold rush and they use a lot of fuel. So we've got five bulldozers use 1,400 litres of fuel in six hours. How many hours could three bulldozers work for if they've got a hundred, uh, sorry, 1,100 litres of fuel to use between them? Okay, so what are we working out? We're working out how many hours. How many hours did we start with? We started with six. So in your calculation, start with six. Okay, let's look at the number of bulldozers first. Originally we had five bulldozers working and now we've only got three bulldozers working. So will that mean they can work for longer, more hours or less hours? Well, if there's less bulldozers, the fuel should last longer. So this is going to increase. So the fraction would be five over three. Remember a top heavy fraction if you think it's gonna go up. Okay, so six times five over three because if there's less bulldozers sharing the fuel, they should be able to work for longer. Okay. And now if we look at the fuel situation, originally we had 1,400, and now we've only got 1,100. What impact will that have on the fuel, uh, on the number of hours they can work for? Will it increase the number of hours, or will it decrease the number of hours? Well, if there's less fuel, they'll be able to work for less time. The number of hours is going to go down, so we need a, like a normal less than one fraction okay so this time i would put them this way around okay so here look less bulldozers less bulldozers meant more hours okay so five over three is bigger than one but here less fuel means less hours and so my fraction is smaller than one, 1,100 over 1,400. And that comes out as, and because it's time, this is going to be awkward anyway, 7.8571, and that goes on, okay, hours. Now, because it's numeracy and because it's higher tier, they may very well ask you to convert that into minutes, okay? So what you would do, you would take in off the seven on your calculator. Let's get rid of that, it's normally equals. So make it 0.8571 so take away the 7 and leave yourself with the the fractional bit of the of your hour your decimal part times that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour and it comes out to the nearest minute i've got 51 minutes so the 0.8571 that horrible uh, recurring decimal is actually equivalent to about 51 minutes so if they want the answer in hours and minutes it's seven whole hours and 51 minutes, okay, if three bulldozers 
are working with 1,100 litres of fuel. And again, if it asked you for an assumption that you've used, it would be that all bulldozers use exactly the same amount of fuel at exactly the same rate. Okay, that the fuel is the same fuel, for instance. Okay, because not all fuels are equal. On the one before, I mean, what would my assumptions be here? That all of the water pumps shift fuel exactly the same rate. Okay. And up here, um, that all cows eat grass at the same rate and that the weather was identical and so nothing changed from day to day and nothing changed from cow to cow. Okay. So two methods. If the numbers are nice on a non-calculated paper, you've got the unitary method. If you're on a calculated paper and the numbers are nasty, you can use the fraction method. Just make sure your fractions are the right way around for either increasing or decreasing.